Going in, huh? At Kimball Junction. Okay, and then go right by it, and go, and then and right in front of Smith's, turn no, left at the stop sign, in front of the basal, follow through the road. Michael Gallagher. I heard Gallagher took the wrong, oh, the yeah. short end of the stick, as Bruce was saying. Gallagher got dominated. So there's going to be a couple more fights so a little bit. I heard his face is a little swollen. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, he was like, he was a target. Yeah. Target. No, well, the only reason that Trevor and G Gallagher went at it was just because they've been fighting like wobbly all year. Old, and we just made him go at it. Oh, they were really angry then at each oh, yeah. other. Oh yeah. She's not here. You got some video of it too. Oh man. What? So what are they? Why are they been aggroed with each other? Not a clue. And all they could do was like. Hey, Nate! Hey, Nate! Get up there. Dude, oh, shut up. Oh, it's all the place to get in line. Yeah. Okay, go and reclaim your mind. Yes. It's imperative. I'm not a hater, Steve said. Oh my God. I watch Red Sox if the Yankees aren't playing. Just to find their weak points. <laughs> and, and it's, it's okay because it's not great wine. If it was good wine, then we would be allowed to pick up. We're going to have your attention. We'll get this show on the road and hopefully we'll, we'll conclude before the sun goes down. Uh, players, stand up. Give your parents a round of round. Oh, yeah. Without them, without them, without them. Sally Castellanos for the varsity. Yeah. Lisa Giordano, Michelle Paulson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are right here. Randy Grant, Diane Malak for the freshman sophomore team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a big, big, you know, I gotta tell you guys, running even just a little high school program like this can't be done just by one or two guys, okay? Oh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you. 
our student managers, Courtney Hoyt and Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> Probably most of you know John Fiesler. He's the, co uh, he's the chair of the Field Improvement Committee. Great stride. Uh, we've had a couple of substantial donations made uh, to be added to our previously established district budget. Hoping to break ground right after summer ball is over, which is about the middle of July. This project. Uh, we have to have completed in about 30 to 45 days, I think. Something in um, We have, uh, the good news is, we don't have to go through any permitting. Uh, nobody but the district oversees it, which means we can pretty much do whatever we want out there. Oh, that's sweet. Um, with what we want to do uh, in preparation for next year, I don't know whether we have to split this money that's coming in. So we're keeping it close to our best here and not letting, you know, too much information out at this point in time. By the time we break, break, break ground, get them completed, pay the contractors, the money will be gone anyway, and who cares? <laughs> Just to give you an idea, when I bought the scoreboard for the high school, I had to buy the softball team a scoreboard that they never even used out of our budget. So that's how it kind of works. So we'll see. But then what they get... Don't forget Jeff's last name, St. Mary's in Moraga, California. We welcome, welcome him aboard. Yay! Thank you! development, plate appearances, and as many reps as you can get. We're not concerned about wins or losses. What we did accomplish this year, we went two on one against both Wasatch and Uinta, which I don't think we've done since you did it in 2001. And I don't think we've ever taken two in a row from Uinta. Yeah. We swept them in the opening series. Those were two great games, complete games as we call them, and I thought the guys did a tremendous job in both those outings, those just a couple of, of highlights. And the freshman, yeah, freshman won all four games. Four and oh, four and oh in, that, in that series. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Yeah. Yeah. Freshman ball is a little bit different here. Not every school has a freshman team. That's why we participate through the academy. And I didn't know this until this year that you really can't play kids on both the freshman team and the academy team. So we, we were kind of fudging the past few years, and I got caught this year. Whatever. Um, so we, between the varsity and JV, they put up over, actually not over, they put up 1,018 plate appearances in 25 games. Uh, that equates to somewhere around 800 and some odd bats. Actually, I tell you right now, 822 at bats. We scored 208 runs in those 25 games, which is an average of 9.4 runs per game. This is this is all good news. The bad news is we left six and a half runners on base per game. Okay. Now, if you just take 50% of that another three runs per game now we're up 12 runs and we would have had a much higher winning percentage with 12 runs high school baseball is a funny thing um, I think Dave Molinaro put it into an email you can take a better team on any given day play a worse team on any given day and the worst team's going to come out ahead don't know why it just happens I guess that's why they call it baseball it's a game of percentages but one of some of the things we're going to work on uh, in the off season, I've talked to both Coach Brian and Coach Terry. Is that we, all right? Now the reason we did this tournament format was to kind of take the pressure off the guys because the GPAs really go south on spring sports in March and April. Been there, done that. Um, and we put a welcome. Okay. Okay. What's up with that? <laughs> JV season cut a little short due to weather and how everything was set up. So we, uh, a lot of this was basically based on the tournament that we had at Heber. So um, we'll start with 
the most improved player, which is uh, Dak Matherly. He's like, who called him Dak? Defensive player of the year. It's the same guy's kind of like Skaggs. We could put him anywhere, and he always made plays. Uh, David Snyder. Well, that, was, that was Derek. <laughs> this one makes me a little humble in life. Didn't they? Austin did they say the wrong name? Did they say Derek? Terry, can I bat left hand? And I finally said yes. <laughs> <laughs> the kid got five straight hits left handed. Offensive player of the year, Austin Moore. Hey, hey, hey. Most valuable player of the year, JV team. Any coach's dream. I wish we had 19 of these kids on any team. Les Ashwood. Yeah. I got it. Les Varsity Awards, head coach, Howard Hoyt. <laughs> I um, failed to mention a little bit about the staff. You know, yeah, we all have designations, head, assistant, JD. But the truth of the matter is we, we coach by committee. We make decisions by committee. Not one of us makes a decision in a vacuum. You know, I had the overriding. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I take credit when I'm going <laughs> my way. But to be honest with you, um, like I said, these guys here, we huddle up constantly. Uh, and that, aside from deciding where to play, when to play, and who to play, uh, based on the weather, you know, making a lineup this year was really tough. Uh, with this many talented guys, we got to the point where we had to take a look back and say, what have you done for me lately? You know? We went back to the previous game. We found 10, 12 guys who swung it. And we eliminated our defensive liabilities. And that was nine guys. You know, and, and there was a constant, consistent thread coming from these guys in the exit interviews, which I thought were excellent this year. We all know those returning guys all know what they need to work on in order to get better at this game. Uh, but they, they told us, a number of people says, we never knew who was going to start. Well, hell, neither did we. <laughs> uh, you know, it was pitching. God, when you got 12 guys on staff who can either start, relieve, middle, long, short, set up, close. You need that in high school baseball, especially if you're coming out of the loser's bracket in the final tournament of the year. You have to win seven games in the last day to win the whole thing. But my point is this. Uh, it was tough, a tough job deciding which nine guys would get the nod on any given day. Right? One guy would get hot one week, man, we put him in there. We made, we had, we actually had a game plan. Um, nine guys, and then we had a three or four man bullpen rotation, depending on if the game was close or whether it was getting out of control. We had certain season 2008. This kid, uh, three years ago, with his throwing mechanics, his loud mouth, <laughs> I'd have said, eh, maybe someday. But he's done a job for him the past two years in right field, Danny Castellanos. Uh, after you looked at the stats, was light years ahead. Uh, 
when a ball was hit to this individual, I was off the bench and said, okay, we're going to work, we're going to bat. It was never going to be. God, I hope he catches the damn. <laughs> he caught 34 fly balls. Wow. wow. That's just fly balls he caught. Just wow. count the balls that were hit to him on line drives with legitimate base hits. Mm -hmm. And of all the balls that were hit to center field, Greg Method made one error. Yeah. He's our defense Woo! player. Yeah. Player of the Year. This gentleman. Not only did a great job at the plate, but being thrust into a position that he was a little bit unfamiliar with, I thought did an excellent job defensively. Offensive Player of the Year had 92 plate appearances, 78 official at bats, a 3.33 batting average. Guys, I don't care about batting averages. Okay. It's nothing more than a measurement of failure. That's it. It's, hey, if I could get paid a million bucks a year for screwing up 70% of the time, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Think about it. What we do look at, what we do look at are situations such as contact. This gentleman made contact 83% of the time. Odd base percentage. 456, slugging percentage, 500. Eight base on balls. Wasn't afraid to wear it, got two hits by pitches. Um, a, a guy that you wanted in the top three, four, five spot, Scott Nguyen. stats, but also conducts himself accordingly on and off the field. He's a consistent team leader, um, a high degree of intensity as it pertains to competition. Uh, this gentleman had 96 official excuse me, plate appearances, 78 official at bats. His measure of failure, in other words his batting average, it was 512. Wow. Wow. So he failed half the time. <laughs> <laughs> On base percentage, 612. Contact percentage, 93.6%. Created 31 runs. Scored 21 times himself. 28 RBIs. <laughs> Has uh, given us a, a card for a hundred dollar gift certificate at their store to go to our varsity MVP. It's been an interesting year, to say the least, um, a challenging year. Uh, and I mean that in a good sort of way, challenging from the standpoint that we didn't have clearly nine or ten guys that stood out. We got 22, 25 guys on any given day can step between the lines. Uh, and with the pitching staff that we have and our four great seniors we're losing this year, uh, there's going to be some younger guys thrust into positions. That's why it's important to develop. 
think we had, you know, from last year we grabbed. Does your age group do the summer classic too? Does your age group do that other one too? No. No, it's one or the other. I'm going to make them go to the plan was to select teams from J.O. and then this other team. One team. I got my tongue there. Here you go, Koda. I didn't really see it. I've seen some recently with the, um, the Oh, yeah. 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 There you go.
defenses? Yeah, not, not too bad. there, kid, huh? Stay loose. Pick up and go. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there was cookies. Yeah. All right, good evening. Thank you so much for bringing food for us and for sharing with us. Um, tonight is our obviously our final concert. It is not my final concert, but it's their final concert. Um, <laughs> and getting ready to go on to middle school at Ecker Hill, and really, I'm sure that they're very excited, especially after going to Ecker Hill yesterday and visiting. Um, it's a huge change from fifth to sixth grade. I have a sixth grader who goes to Ecker Hill. Um, it is a lot, just so that you know as a parent, if you have not had any students that have gone through the middle school process yet, um, it is a lot of organization and a lot of really taking care of themselves, which I am really proud of our fifth grade teachers because they do an excellent job of trying to help them along that line. Um, as a parent, I am one that I don't meet with my sixth grader. I don't really need to know what kind of homework she has. And, Honestly, sometimes I feel like a bad parent because I don't even know what she has for homework. But she um, has learned how to be responsible for herself. And that's what these guys here will learn definitely next year. And they've done a really good job this year of trying um, to go through that process. They've done a nice job of singing this year. They've improved a ton. We did a great job at Lagoon for those of us that went to the competition and got first place. And um, they've done well in all of their concerts. I'm really proud of them. Uh, it's been kind of, just on a personal note, it's, I appreciate you guys for sometimes putting up with me as much as I put up with you as well. <laughs> because it's been a trying year for me. My sister was diagnosed with lupus this year uh, with a very strong, a strong form of it. And that's been very difficult for our family to deal with. So I appreciate when I come in sometimes and say, I'm not in a great mood today. or they